everybody, uh, Dr. Rick here. Another segment of Riding with Rick brought to you by the Black Voice. Uh, as I always, start out if you believe in the work we're doing in the black community uh, on so many different fronts. Uh, if you follow me for any stretch of time, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to get into it, but you know what I'm talking about. The work we do is so valuable. Uh, and I'm constantly being contacted because there's a constant need. And I've made up in my mind that I'm not going to back down from it, even though we are extremely underfunded. I'm not backing down from it. Uh, these kids need us. These young women need us. These young men need us. Families need us. And I'm not backing down because we're underfunded. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we are going to do it. Uh, somebody has to answer the bell. Somebody has to be committed enough to see it through. Nothing that you are going to do in this life or this world is going to be easy. So I, I, I have never backed down from anything, and I'm not backing down now. I'm going to give. I'm going to push. I'm going to fight, and I'm going to figure it out. But I'm not backing off. Um, man, my, one of my mentees contacted me yesterday about working with a kid that he's absolutely really head over heels with believing this kid has something special. Well, number one is you got a 22-year-old kid that says, yes, sir, and no, sir. That That's almost like a lost, you know, where they make them at nowadays because these kids, just so many things that are part of structure. Uh, but, yeah, so if you believe in what we're doing, show some love, show some support. One way or another, we, we, we're pressing forward. I want to double back down on this conversation about A.J. Armstrong, uh, Antonio Armstrong, the young kid that's, uh, just went through his third trial uh, for allegedly, and I'm still saying allegedly, even though this last trial finally produced a guilty verdict. There are a lot of questions left open. If you follow the cases, you're from Houston. If you know people, uh, I literally know someone who grew up in that household uh, who coaches kids now, uh, and he has shared some stuff, and I'm not going to get into the detail because it's personal, but there are a lot of things that are going on. Uh, the guy that I'm talking about is a little older than AJ. He doesn't know a whole lot about AJ, but he knows that family. So he's hurting. And so we have all this stuff going on. But what I'm going to tell you is, I think one of the things that hurt AJ is he simply outgrew one of his greatest assets in that courtroom. And that's what that was his childlike appearance. When it first happened, he, he looked like a kid. Well, he's grown into a full-grown male. He's 22, 23 now. Uh, he's married. He's got facial hair. He is the scariest thing known to people in this un in, in the United States, especially with around the world, a black man. And so it went from this little kid couldn't possibly have done that to that's a black man automatically assumed guilty until you prove to me he's not. That's the first thing. The second thing is this magic... Uh, blood that appeared on the shirt that wasn't on the shirt, but even by the testimony of the police officers who interviewed him and who searched him and checked and the CSIs and everybody else said they didn't see blood on the shirt, but all of a sudden blood ended up on the badge, the visitor's badge at the police station they gave him when they interviewed him. And that showed up two days before the third trial started. And so they had to delay that to have hearings to see if it was gonna be admitted. The judge allowed it to be admitted. Now what you gotta understand is uh, the district attorney, the actual elected district attorney, not the one actually trying the case, but the district attorney came out. This is an election year. And they're doubling down on the fact that this is going to help her in her election. This is what this is about. She can't go down having lost such a high profile case where, and you can almost gather where the split is. It's, it's a real decisive line on who believes this kid may not or may have done it. Uh, I don't have enough evidence to call it e either way. So then that would actually have to make me vote not guilty because see, that's the thing we lose when we're sitting up and we're looking at this system. We got so many people that are convicted on, he probably did it. That's not the burden of proof. The burden of proof is beyond a reasonable doubt. But how many times are they sitting up in there going, man, I don't know who else could have did it. Well, that's not what, what, what you're trying to figure out. If you know, could there have been somebody else? Now, obviously, if it could have been somebody else, that's a reasonable doubt, but it doesn't have to have been somebody else. It's that you've shown me at enough where I have to look at the preponderance of evidence and say, I can't see how it wasn't him. 
then then you can say, okay, I'm voting guilty. But just sitting up and saying it had to be his sister said it wasn't him uh, who was there at the time. Uh, his entire family, including the uh, parents of his parents, who he supposedly killed, are standing behind this kid. There's a reason two juries before this did not convict. Now, they didn't exonerate either. So obviously there are some questions that are there. But you got to understand that there's something going on outside of just plain justice and uh, fact. And trust me, I've dealt in and out with this system. The idea is that if the DA puts it on the table, it has to be true that it's a standard that you trust the, the DA more than you trust the defense attorney. I'm telling you that they will go the extra mile to get a conviction. It stops being about justice and it starts to be about winning. Winning is how you build your career in that, in, in that office. Winning is how you do it, not by saying, I got the truth. If the truth ends up being not a conviction, then that's not helping your career. So you're out there to win. You're out there to prove that we charged this person because they were guilty and we didn't go and jump ahead of ourselves and we didn't get an uh, egg in our face by being defeated and not being able to convict this person. And so all of these things are going again. I'm not standing on a box saying this kid didn't do it. I don't have enough evidence with everything I read, the court documents I have been able to read and get a hold to the transcripts. And I look through it. You know, you, you ask, is it possible? Absolutely possible. He did it. But there's also a possibility that he didn't. There's also a possibility of a number of other things going on. It's too many questions. Even in that family, there's not a certainty. Matter of fact, the family is backing him. Even the, pe the parents of the people that he allegedly killed is backing him. Again, my thing is anytime there's a question uh, arising with the judicial system, I'm going to side with the person that's being being accused. Uh, and it's not about justifying or uh, glorifying wrong. I'm 100% I'm, I'm, I'm against violence against our people, whether it's definitely if it's uh, against your parents, uh, your siblings, uh, black men against black men, definitely black men against black women, black men against children, women against children, women against men. I don't want to see blacks killing each other. So I'm never going to co-sign that. But what I'm not going to also co-sign is fast tracking black men to prison on flimsy evidence when we are seeing black men constantly being re released after spending decades in prison for something they didn't do. Somebody lied. Man, there are situations where they literally are threatening and, and, and coercing people to say they saw something they didn't saw. I mean, they didn't see. And so you actually think that it's not possible that all of a sudden that blood, you got to explain to me how something so meticulously sifted through in the beginning missed that. Also, you got to explain to me something um, that anybody who's ever bled on clothing knows how fast that blood dries. Now, for blood to transfer from clothing, it still has to be damp enough to clean. For it to transfer from clothing in enough of an amount to be visible for somebody to even say, look at this, it has to be wet. So that means this person killed him, was smart enough to wash the gunshot residue off, but dumb enough to leave the shirt on. Get past, I don't know how many officers, that's literally checking him to look and see. And all of them say they didn't see it on there. And then all of a sudden, two years later after, no, six years later, after two trials, six, no, seven years later, after two trials, seven years later, all of a sudden, it pops up on the back of the badge. And this isn't saying even if they frame them, sometimes you frame guilty people. But the bottom line is the, 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 the conviction can't be based off of faulty evidence. It has to be based off of the truth. If you get him, you get him. If you don't, you don't. The whole thing is supposed to be set up to, I'd rather see a, a guilty man go free than an innocent man go to, to uh, prison. That should always be. You don't want innocent people in prison. Guilty people are going to be out anyway. You're not going to get them all. Some of them are going to get away. So that's the thing. You don't start tossing guilty, I mean, innocent people in prison because you can't get the guilty ones. And you don't start bending the rules to get the guilty ones. The rules are there for a reason, but the rules are not equally applied. So that's my thing. I want you to really, really, truly take some time to think about it. 
Uh, I want you to share with me what you think in the description box. I want you to tell me what you think happened. I'm not asking you for proof. I'm asking you just based off of what you've seen, what do you think happened? Do you think he got a fair shake? Do you think he did it? Do you think the DA was going to go after him no matter how many times it took until they did get him? You know, share, share what you feel. I, I, want, I want to know. If you like uh, these segments of Riding with Rick, click the like button, uh, click the share button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And for those of you who have been riding with me and those of you, the new ones starting to ride with me, if you believe in the work that we're doing, if you believe in, 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 in just go look at some of the stuff we've done. But if you believe in the work we're doing, we need your support. We need your support for Black Man Lead. We need your support for working with women from uh, sexual childhood sexual abuse and incest and domestic violence. We need your support for the research center we have, the think tank we have, all the things we've been doing for 30 years. We need you. If you go back and look, this is I'm the, I'm not new to this. I've been doing this for a while. Uh, we'll continue to do it. Like I said, I am not going to fold. I'm not going to give in. Uh, whether we're underfunded or not, we're serving the community. We are going to be there. We're going to be present. So also, if anybody is out there and something's going on and you think it's something that we can help you with, some form of advocacy, uh, some more, some form of direction, or some resources, put that in there. Uh, reach out. I'm having some major problems with some of my emails and I don't think it's by accident, but you can email me at Rick Wallace at Odyssey Media Group. Well, it's Rick Wallace at Odyssey hyphen, which is the dash, mediagroup.com. Email me there with anything urgent and I'll get to you and hopefully we'll have our emails and everything going back up by the end of the week. It's been a crazy week with all that stuff happening. But hey, look, for those of you who have Who've, who've been uh, sharing with me that you re really believe in what I'm doing, you believe in, uh, in, in and appreciate the stuff that I'm sharing. I really do appreciate it because sometimes it gets real tough. Sometimes it gets uh, crazy and you, you look up and you're wondering what in the hell am I doing? Um, but I, after a conversation with a client who also happens to be a major supporter of what I do in the community, after a conversation today with that person, I'm 100% rejuvenated. I'm burnt right now. I'm spent right now, but I'm trusting God to be behind me and my purpose. I believe in what I'm doing to the point that I'm not going to quit on it. I am going to find some space and time to breathe because I need to, but I'm going to continue to do what's necessary because somebody has to. I tell you all the time, I'm going to live my life on full because at some point I'm going to leave this place and I want to die on E, meaning I don't want to die with stuff undone. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. I'm coming back. I'm going to talk to you about Kiara Coles. That's the young postal work worker out of Chicago that's been missing for two years. Like 75,000 other young black uh, females, we need to talk about that. We need to talk about it. We need to have a real long discussion about why this is so quiet and moving under the current and what are we going to do about it as a community so i'll be back a little bit later to talk to you about that on that note i'm out of here you guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day